Excellent. Welcome to the Mouse Place Rent Demo Meeting for November 28th, 2017. Uh, we are post-Thanksgiving uh, here in the U.S. and pushing into the winter months. And with that, let's... let's winter get, in Texas. Winter in Texas, hopefully mild. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get started. Uh, I was going to use this opportunity again to hawk our uh, Metasploit.com uh, makeover. Uh, you should totally go there and you can see things like the top contributors. And I think that's you, Jeffrey. Yeah, I got yeah. knocked off the top. Uh, this, oh, is last, yeah. this is the last 12 months now, mind you. So, you know, <laughs> there's always room for healthy competition. Oh, yeah. um, so if, if, if you don't see your, so big thanks to everybody uh, who, who's here. And if you don't see your face here and you'd like to see your face here, um, uh, Metasploit.com even has uh, like a list of some open issues that are, are listed as uh, newbie friendly. So even if you haven't contributed before, uh, swing on over. Or if you have and, and want something that shouldn't, shouldn't be too taxing, um, come check it out. I think right now our PR current open PRs is about at 60, so it's a little high for us. So I imagine we'll be working on, on knocking that down a bit. Um, but yeah, so a shameless plug, visit metasploit.com. That's uh, <laughs> this is that is. I'll, I'll take credit for that. Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll give it to you. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no fighting over that. Um, with the Thanksgiving holiday, a little little light on some of the activity, uh, but here's some things that landed. Uh, we had a, a remote code execution exploit for PFSense, the firewall software. Oh, that's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, lot of, lot of probably goodies lying around for folks to go find <laughs> targets. Brendan, was that authenticated or unauthenticated? Authenticated. It was a, um, it was a uh, authenticated, like a cross like vulnerability. Okay. Um, and we we have uh, a slow loris uh, denial of service uh, module now uh, in Python. Yeah, so that that's kind of interesting uh, in that it um, the reason why it's in Python is really to take advantage of the external module mechanism, which allows you to do things like use all the sockets without killing framework at the same time. So it kind of adds it not only uh, um, maybe a little bit more performance, but it also um, uh, has a little bit of a sandbox between the module and the rest of Metasploit. So you can run something like you know use up all the all the possible TCP connections without killing anything else at the same time. Oh, right. So that's kind of a nice design. Yeah, that's very cool. And uh, domain fronting, that's a big one. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty cool one. So so basically, uh, you know, for the longest time, Metasploit or Interpreter went would dial back home. The traffic was very easy to fingerprint because it didn't have things like cookies or um, host headers or other things you'd expect a web browser to actually send across in a web request. Um, now you can actually embed all those things into an interpreter um, and it works on Python, PHP. It doesn't work on PHP. It works on Python, um, Java, Android, Windows, and uh, Linux and Mac OS. So it's, um, it's mostly an effort of implementing it everywhere, but. Uh, uh, and now you can basically make your web traffic look much more realistic and get through a lot of web app caching firewalls that are expecting an only particular host to go through. You can now basically simulate those hosts and basically front for a lot of domains through an environment. Yeah, that's very cool. So we've been excited about that one. Uh, the metal extension loader, the payload side has landed. We're going to testing the gem. It, it was a lot of little finagling that had to happen. Sounds <laughs> like that, uh, you know, I, I appreciate big thanks to everybody who's helped with that and massage that along. Uh, let's talk about things in the works. Uh, this actually, this goes into two slides here. Um, so some of the remote code ex exploit modules that we're, we're looking at, um, uh, we talked about uh, last time around, the Kaltura, the D-Link, uh, NASN and VR, the Explico uh, network forensic analysis tool, the uh, HP Load Runner, and then also uh, there's a Polycom HDX module in, in the queue, and uh, Libra NMS, which is a network monitoring solution, and an update to the Drupageddon uh, exploit uh, that just basically adds a, 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 a new, somewhat creative, I guess, method to, to, to getting in there. And uh, and then also the uh, module cache improvements, which is not really an RC exploit module. I don't, sorry about that. <laughs> that. Well, in that we list. could probably be creative and turn it into one. Yeah. <laughs> module cache improvements are a module. That's a challenge for you there, Chris. <laughs> oh, well, we can totally exploit module cache improvements. Yeah. It's a piece store. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, you can totally, if you have a malicious module metadata, then it will deserialize it back into an object that will then take over your framework. <laughs> <laughs> and I see poor Jeffrey just doing a big face palm here. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, excellent. <laughs> Love the conversation, guys. All right. Uh, so, and also things in the works, um, there's been some uh, improvements to for domain hash dump to work on all uh, Windows Server 2016 domain controllers. 
Um, also, uh, update to uh, Cisco Smart Install module we have, uh, auxiliary module for downloading the config. Um, and I think Metasploit in that case acts as a TFTP server to accept it. Mm -hmm. um, the, the framework side of the metal extension loader is, is in the works um, and uh, the PR getting rung out and landed. And then we also had an improved list of, of user agents that also involved making it uh, some commonly available between uh, external modules like the uh, Solaris Python and, uh, uh, you know, and the, the root, because initially it was just in, our, in the Ruby framework. Yeah, yeah. so, so traditionally Metasploit has always simulated Internet Explorer 6 for all of its sort of HTTP client stuff at default. And maybe it's a good time to update this so that it looks like a common web, web browser. Um, so there's a nice uh, website you can go and get like the, the list at the top actual in use uh, user agents out there. Chrome is like 46% of like all the internet and so like one particular version of Chrome. So um, we have a, a, a part of the Rex library that allows you to get that list, um, but it wasn't shared between like Python modules. And in fact, it's hardly used within Metasploit itself either. So um, we've got a PR in the works to make it more used <laughs> within yeah, Metasploit yeah, yeah. and uh, to make it so that we can share that metadata between um, all the modules. So kind of a neat thing. It's kind of a, a learning experience in how to how to share the kind of data when you have external and internal modules at the same time. Oh yeah, sure. Nice. Very cool. All right, we'll get down to the team updates. The Dharma Initiative. Namaste. Adam. Uh, so Namaste. with the uh, short sprint, thanks to Thanksgiving cutting out a uh, large chunk of it, uh, we didn't land a whole lot of modules, but we did get the slow lowers module. Uh, in this week's edition of what year is it? Um, we incorporated the bulk of slow uh, and that was a pretty painless process. Uh, we had to make some improvements to the bridge interface um, as we keep adding more things that stretch more corner cases. Uh, but yeah, it works pretty stable, runs in Python 2 or Python 3. So if you have any Python installed, uh, your framework should be able to find it and run the slow module. Nice. Um, also been working, uh, Way has been working with uh, James on the next round of the Metasploitable 3 CTF. And so that's going to be uh, fun when that's unveiled in the next couple of days. Yeah, Very cool. yeah. Um, something else that's kind of interesting that landed is uh, um, Zero Steiner built this new way of doing tab completion automatically within Metasploit. So rather than having to write your own like sort of callback modules, you just basically say, how would Metasploit tab complete for a particular command? It will automatically figure all this stuff out for you. Oh, cool. So there's a, a new common way to do it, and uh, that's pretty nifty. That actually just got landed like yesterday or something. Yeah, just yesterday. Very, very it's hot up the presses. Yeah. Very cool. And maybe about four or five hours ago, um, I pushed up a PR to make it so that exploit modules can do our hosts yay, as well as our yay. hosting. So um, we'll, I'll show a demo of that later. Awesome. Very cool. I don't know if I'm really on Dharma Initiative. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to <laughs> jump in there. That, no, you got to be somewhere, right? Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> Script kitties. Anybody want to talk through that? Sure. Going one. Sure. Oh, cool. Hey, Brendan. Hello. Hello. Hold on. So, uh, so I'm uh, excuse me for a moment. So as usual, we're kicking uh, the automated testing can down the road continually, trying to incorporate all of the automated testing that we have into a framework that will work with us to make life a little bit easier. Uh, in addition to everybody else, we also uh, were turkey gluttons and uh, kind of the short week pushed forward. Uh, we started doing our payload PR meetings, and while right now we haven't landed a whole lot of stuff, at least everything is now assigned, and so hopefully uh, we'll be able to land stuff a little bit faster as the future moves on. Um, we did some work with payload-friendly uh, UI research for asynchronous payloads, and uh, I'm going to let somebody else talk about the Lexra processor oddities. <laughs> So uh, the, the, the core issue with that guy, and I mentioned a little bit the last sprint demo, is that it didn't support unaligned instructions. Um, I found this, uh, this RISC processor that someone invented in 2017 um, <laughs> that also is missing all those instructions. You can optionally compile them in or not, so you use fewer LUTs inside your, uh, your FPJ when you synthesize the core. But um, that didn't work either. So it turns out there are other problems with the CPU, like where it needs special 8-byte alignment and bin utils as well for all uh, strings and other crazy stuff like that. So um, the, the too long didn't listen is um, 
there's a lot more stuff that has to be done to make this work. Um, the good news is it's still in a lot more devices than I realized. There's like thousands of cameras that have this core in it. Very there's well. lots of set top devices, set top devices that have this. I actually had a couple of them in my house. I didn't realize. Um, so oh, nice. all the original popcorn hours have this CPU in them. Um, and uh, so yeah, I, I guess this oddball CPU is going to live on for a long time. There's a guy um, in I think France that did an OpenWRT port of it. He has a more update tool chain for it um, because right now we won't build our interpreter with GCC3 um, and almost got that building. So cool. maybe at some point, this is kind of a back burner project. Uh, we'll actually have support for the weird lecture core that keeps popping up in various places. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Abnormal form. Uh, yeah, that's us. That's you. Um, hey, Jim. Hey. <laughs> uh, what do we do? We uh, got the first PR up that's uh, officially part of the Goliath project. That's the module cache improvements that's been mentioned a few times earlier. Um, mm -hmm. That uh, should be landing shortly. I know Chris has been working hard to get uh, get that up to snuff. There were some testing issues and, and such that he's been working on fixing. Um, also, we've been working on improving the sending of files uh, when using the remote data store. So. Uh, basically what it does is if you get some fancy loot on a session, it's going to base64 that and send that with the JSON uh, data and store the file up in the cloud or wherever your remote data store is. And uh, uh, before it would just store it, but now it, it's pulling that down to um, fix a couple bugs in there where it was like, you know, sending files twice when it shouldn't have and, and stuff like that. Um, and, and that should be, that was actually landed to our main Goliath branch just a few minutes ago by, by Matthew. So um, when we get that PR put up to land that to uh, the core mouse flight master, it will be there. Um, TBD on that. Nice. <coughs> and that's to five. Yeah, that'll be mouse um, flight five feature. Oh, very cool. Thanks, James. Uh, Flatlanders. Uh, let's see. Uh, we had a, a PSO rotation this past week. It was even though it was a short week with Thanksgiving, uh, but Dev hung out with uh, the PSO team. Uh, metal extension loader uh, work. Uh, also did a little bit of lab inventorying of kind of this equipment we have for testing. Uh, did the wrap-up blog for Metasploit this uh, before the uh, Turkey week. And then with Ruby SMB, uh, the DC RPC uh, progress pushes forward. The NetShare Enum all uh, request uh, comes back with a, a valid response um, from the uh, SMB. Um, currently working on processing that response. Uh, moving forward. And it's demo time. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you want who wants to go first? Do you guys, do you guys want to fight it out? You, you know, uh, basically, you all do right there. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'd mm -hmm. like to show you guys a couple of neat Metasploit framework things that we've been working on lately. Um, we alluded to earlier in the demo in the uh, demo slides. Um, one of them, uh, people ask me about this all the time, They're like, why can't I exploit multiple hosts at once? And the answer is, well, there's, as I would like to say, a lot of different corner cases that go into exploit multiple hosts at once. You may be hitting a whole network range, maybe the exploit needs a different payload for every different host that you hit. Or maybe it needs a different target. Or maybe there's a lot of reasons why this may not work. Or maybe it's exactly what you want. And so for a long time, you could do this with a resource script. You could write a resource script that takes a list of IP addresses and one by one configures a module to run. And um, you then, then exploits the module, um, exploits the host. Um, but I still get questions all the time about um, how to start Metasploit console, how to, um, how to just do this in kind of a more natural way, a more intuitive way. Well, um, in a previous PR, the one we actually did for domain fronting, um, I was kind of annoyed that our parameter names were very inconsistent with regards to how you could configure HTTP. And so I added this, this function where you could basically set up an alias for a data store option. So if I type help here, I'm gonna help, if I type info here, um, you can see here that I have lots of parameters for this particular um, uh, module. Um, you know, our, our hosts, I think here I've already given away the, the, the game, our hosts, um, if I type set our host, one, two, seven, nine, zero, zero, one. A functionality that we just recently added this last week that's part of the domain fronting PR is this kind of side effect is we made we added this ability to alias data store option. So you can see here I typed our host, which is what this module normally takes. 
And if I were to type info again, you can see now our hosts now has the, the new value. So basically it allows us to rename parameters when we go, oh, you know, it'd be nice if that was more unified. So, so now what this also means is now our host and our hosts are interchangeable synonyms for each other. You use one for the other. That way all your scripts don't work, your muscle memory doesn't break, although it does kind of break because when you type set our host, you get a tab for our host instead of our host. But hopefully that's just a minor thing. Um, kind of waiting for all the uh, people doing training to come back and go, oh my God, it doesn't have our host anymore. What? Whatever shall we do? Um, but the other neat kind of side effect of this is now that our host is in there, um, I could actually exploit the entire private subnet if I wanted to and, and run it. And now what Metasploit will actually do is it will, um, oh, it'll fail to bind to a, to a handler. Um, let's see here. So, oh, random one, yeah. so, so it turns out exploiting my own local uh, computer wasn't a great of an idea. Um, so let's go ahead and stop it. Uh, set a host, a port. Uh, let's say, let's make it um, oh, a host. I don't know. We'll bind to the loopback address as well. You can see here, um, it'll actually just go through and actually iterate through each of the hosts that you want to target and uh, exploit them. It's not working all that well for this demo. It worked really well at 4 o'clock this morning. Right. Um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> demo guys. Demo guys. you kind of get the idea here. If I were to actually target a real host, um, it would work really well, and, um, and it does. So the cool. basic idea here is that we made it so that now Metasploit can basically run over a range of hosts for exploits, and uh, that's a good thing. That's awesome. Yeah. We're very flexible. Um, that's really all I have to show for right now. Fair enough. I think I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you, Brent. Um, I was wondering, um, not to call someone out on here, but Matthew, would, would, you, would you be in any kind of uh, state to show off the, the slow Loris uh, attack and mostly kind of how it integrates from an uh, external model point of view? Sure. Uh, can you give me a minute to get the VMs up and running? Sure. All right. Oh, Matthew's presenting. So what we've got here is Metasploitable 2, because that's what was um, originally reported just as the, the virtual machine to use um, for it. So I have that set up on a VM. And it has a, obviously it has a web server running. So I can curl that web interface and we see that we get a response. And I've got Metasploit over here. And I'm going to load up the module. So we can see the options here. Uh, currently, as Brent mentioned earlier, there's, it's using random user agent. Currently, this is the one that was originally implemented in the script, but uh, the, that open PR will then leverage that same data file um, to use uh, more updated ones. Although I, I think this list still has more updated ones than the base one being used by Metasploit. So we'll grab the IP address, set our host for the virtual machine. Um, the web server's on 80, and the default here is to use 150 sockets. And it doesn't have SSL, so I'm just going to leave that alone. And I'm going to start this up and then go back over and run curl again. And we'll see that it just sort of sits here. When it first starts up, sometimes it, it'll give you a response as it's spinning up those 150 sockets. So now it's basically just looping through and just sending updated uh, headers to the server to keep it all, all of those connections alive. And it's still sitting there. And if I cancel out Control-C this, go over that curl responded and the server's back. Cool. Another quick demo of it. Um, I, I think that, you know, more, we had a, you know, great contribution from the community member who gave us that as a Ruby, but uh, because of those issues, we just sort of pushed it over to an external module, which sort of gave us that additional boost of getting another external module in there. So there's yet another example, and it also extended some of the template functionality there uh, for denial of service modules. 
We're right on. Cool, looks great. You can yeah. see there, Jen, it only takes 150 connections yeah. and you completely kill the server. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Matthew. Appreciate sure. that. Last call. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here <laughs> or something. You can go home. No, I can't say that. All right, see you guys. All right. Hey, uh, thanks for everybody attending the meeting and thanks for everybody for the demos. Appreciate it. Excellent.